Movies, television, books, music, games, comics. Pop culture is one of the things that makes life worth living, and pop culture can be a window into your soul. Welcome to Blew My Mind, a forum for shrink tank contributors to share and discuss their own personal, mind-blowing pop culture experiences. I'm your host, Dr. Craig Pullman. I'm a neurodevelopmental psychologist, Trekkie, and Yoda disciple. I'm joined by two guests, Dr. Rachel Kitson. Yay, happy to be here. Rachel is a psychologist, writer, artist, speaker, champion distance runner, and mom to Leo, a baby boy whose adorableness <laughs> could power a small city. <laughs> I kid you not. Dr. Dave Verhagen. What is going on? Dave is a psychologist, author, speaker, podcaster, Comic-Con panelist, Southeast Psych co-founder, and master of illusion. And matador. Oh, yes. That's, that's, I forgot to mention that. You forget that. the big one. Yeah. Yes. And I am a master of illusion, so I, 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 I take that. Yes. I, I, am, I am the world's best bad magician. <laughs> All right. Marcus Tullius Cicero declared that brevity is a great charm of eloquence. Well, we're going to be both charming and eloquent as we discuss four-word movie lines that blew our minds. Got to be four. No more, no fewer. Rachel, what do you have for us? Okay, my four-word line is a movie that I saw probably 15 years ago and have not seen since, but it is from the fake rock doc Spinal Tap, and the line is... These go to 11. So in the scene, um, one of the guys from Spinal Tap is being interviewed for this fake rock documentary, and he's showing the guy these amps that they they sell and most amps go up to 10 and he's explaining how these amps go to 11 and so when you want that extra edge you know in your sound or in your noise you can you can crank it up past 10 to 11 and the guy who's interviewing him is like well why didn't you just make 10 louder and the guy kind of stares at him and he kind of looks around and he's like these go to 11. So it's just this kind of fake documentary. It was hysterical. This is one of those lines that has, again, become part of the pop culture lexicon. And it's like, anytime you want to say something, blew the roof off of it, blew your mind. It's like, it went to 11. So it's become, it's actually become almost a bigger thing than the movie itself. Right. <laughs> oh, it's, the, this m movie is hysterical. And, y you know, I, I'm reminded that, Dave, there is a, a documentary, a real documentary, not a rockument, a fake rockumentary that came out. I think it was Anvil, the story of Anvil. Does that sound familiar? Yes, yes. We watched it together, I think. So, so Anvil <laughs> is a real, real group, a, a real band, and their story is frighteningly similar to Spinal Tap, and they're about as dim-witted <laughs> as Nigel talking about his amps that go up to 11. It's like reality yeah. TV coming true. Right, Absolutely. Yeah, kind of like everything in our culture right now. Right, right. Shockingly, <laughs> what is happening? yes. All right. Dave, what do you have for us? One of my favorite movies of all time, a top 10 favorite movie. It is There Will Be Blood, and the line is, I drink your milkshake. So in this scene, it's a battle. It's kind of the, the, the closing battle of the whole movie. And it's between Daniel Plainview, who's played by Daniel Day Lewis, who is amazing. And I will say this: I don't, I don't fear any contradiction on this. This is the single best film performance ever in any category. I really do. I think this is the best movie performance ever. And he is battling his nemesis, who is a pastor named Eli Sunday. And in this scene, uh, Eli has come to him basically for money. And what he doesn't realize is that Daniel has taken the oil that's under Eli's property and drilled underneath it and sucked it dry. And now Eli is basically penniless and he doesn't have any oil under his property. And that's why Daniel Day-Lewis says, what I have basically done is I've sucked all the oil out from under your land. I drank your milkshake. And the line is so bonkers and the scene is so <laughs> bat crap crazy. It is one of my favorite scenes ever. It is the most, you could watch it over and over again and go, what in the heck is happening here? It is so nuts. I love it. I love everything about it. 
I think that wasn't this Daniel Day Lewis's second Oscar winning perform best best uh, yes best Oscar. Yeah, he he won the Oscar for it. It really is. I mean, I've watched. I, I rarely watch movies more than once because I always think if I'm going to watch a movie, I want to watch something I haven't seen. But this is a movie I probably have seen four times. It holds up. It's better with each viewing. Um, and by the way, the whole the whole relationship with him and Eli is amazing. But there's also this weird relationship with him and Eli's uh, his his twin brother, oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's weird and. So it, there's still a lot of mystery in the movie, but the the performance is so magnificent. And to be able to pull off a line like that in a way that you're like, that's so crazy, but I love it, is is remarkable. Now, I, I remember that Daniel Day-Lewis, he really got into the method acting for this role. Yes, and like yeah. he refused to get out of character. So just when the camera wasn't on, he, just, he kept up that, that accent and everything. Yes. And in fact, the guy who played Eli Sunday in the first, uh, when they first started filming, and I don't know the actor's name, um, he quit because Daniel Day Lewis was so rough with him and so difficult to be with uh. because he was in character. Paul Dano hangs with him beautifully, but if you watch the movie, I mean, they are like grabbing each other's hair, dragging each other through the mud. Uh, he's in this scene that we're talking about now, uh, he, uh, Daniel Day Lewis is throwing. Uh, bowling balls and bowling, you know, like it's just, uh, it, it, it's it's brutal and it's 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 wild. Love it. Yeah, I love that line because it's so risky and so original, and it could have, you know, to to go with that and to develop it. I think it just it makes a movie um, time, you know, kind of timeless in a way because it's just so odd. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a movie, to be real honest, that a lot of people who see it don't like it. It's a right. hard movie to like to because like, yeah. it's begging you not to like it because it's begging you not to like this guy. Yeah. And 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 yet, I think if you really get it, it really gets under your skin in a way that few movies do. I really think it's... We, we, we have talked about Citizen Kane on this podcast before. I think it is the Citizen Kane of recent years. I really do. That's That's high praise. Let's jump to a completely different genre. My forward line comes from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And the final film released in 2003 is The Return of the King. Uh, A lot of great moments and epic scenes and battles across the whole series, and in this movie in particular. One of my favorite characters is Eowyn who is uh, a a princess from Rohan, with the the horse riders. And in the big battle against the orcs, she's out there, and she's actually concealing the fact that she's a woman. She's under a helmet. And she's got the double sword action going, and she's taking down the big elephants, and she's just a total badass. And then she faces off defending her uncle, from the the king of the Nazgul, the witch king, who is this this really nasty villain. And what you hear mentioned a couple of times just in passing is that no man can kill the witch king. And when you just hear it in passing, you just think, oh, that just means like he's immortal. Well, you know, they have this fight and she's, you know, she's using this this shield and this little sword and he's swinging around this big mace. And then, and then she managed to stab him, and, and it, the sword kind of explodes on her, and and then he just sort of turns to her, and you never see his face because he's under this big dark helmet, and he just dismissively says, "No man can kill me," and then she whips off her helmet, revealing the fact that she's a woman, her long red hair, and she exclaims, "I am no man." And then she stabs him in the face right through the helmet with her sword, and he just explodes, and then he just compresses down into nothing. And of course, she falls back from the explosion of the evil energy being released, and it's just amazing. And you know, I read the books many, many years ago before the the, the movies were released, and but I don't remember that scene. I, a lot of time had passed, obviously, and so when when I heard the line in the when I saw it in the theater. It just it made my mind explode. I just I about jumped out of my chair when I saw that happen. You know, I gushed about There Will Be Blood, but to be honest, my favorite movie of all time, and I'm considering these three movies as one, the trilogy as sort of a, an experience, 
that's my favorite film of all time. And it's so great, including this last part of the trilogy, that this line, I don't even remember it. And yet it, it, you know, the the whole movie is like that. So That's powerful. a great line. It's a tremendous line, but it's part of a greater sort of whole experience that's just remarkable. Yeah, that says a lot that, you know, that you could take a line like that and the description and reenactment that, we you know, was awesome. And to think that a whole movie you could, because I don't recall that specific line either, but that because the whole movie was fil- filled with such, you know, riveting lines and images yeah such a great such a great experience that that movie and and i know cgi is caught up with it and and there are other films that might do better with cgi but but even still that movie just holds up it's one of these movies that will hold up 50 years from now yeah the the story is great and timeless acting is fantastic so yeah even if the effects slowly become dated i think it's going to hold up really nicely so uh, perhaps we'll have a, a Blew My Mind episode where we just talk about the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Would, um, count me in. Would you all come back for that? <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll schedule it at some point. That is all we have time for today. Our audio engineer and editor is Sean Beck. He's both charming and eloquent. Thanks to my guests, Dr. Rachel Kitson and Dr. Dave Verhagen. We all write four word plus articles for Shrink Tank. Be sure to check out all of the content, including videos, quizzes, and surveys on our website. Shrinktank.com is the place for all of your psychology and pop culture needs. Until next time, I'm Craig Pullman, and this is Blew My Mind.